And then let me start sharing this. Start sharing this. I remember Red was my only view viewer one time. Tim Jones, it's only me and you, bro. Mm -hmm. Shit unchanged, Red. Yeah, shit unchanged. Shit, shit unchanged, yeah, bro. Yeah, and then move the tent. Move the tent. <laughs> <laughs> Working, I've been working, man. Yeah, you have one. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that was a that was dun, a nice dun, moment. Dun. You're like, Jude, you ain't you ain't happy, bro? We out of the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> we on the boat with women's. Yeah, that was a good day. Yeah. Draco still be hitting on that shit. Draco, right? Draco, yeah. Hey, you know what? Now that we did that a couple of years ago, everybody's asking about the movement now. Everybody asking about the movement. Yes. So now we live right here, right? Shout out to everybody. You know? Look at June got his weight up. I'm 541. <laughs> we got everybody here now. I've been practicing. I've been practicing, right? Let's go, June. Yeah, I've been practicing. Make sure you focus on Ray more than me. And then Bachi you gonna June. get on in a little bit. So after Bachi get so on, we live now. We live now. <laughs> Shout out to everybody on the Instagram. <laughs> we got the big homie Red. Yo, June got his weight up. Look <laughs> at this shit. Oh shit, I remember when this motherfucker only had two viewers on this motherfucker and it was me and him. <laughs> and now this dude got 500, 600 bills, dude. Let's go, let's go. So we're going to start this real quick. We're going Today's going to be exclusive. So we're going to do Red and we're going to do my man Pacho. He's going to get on live with us too. Focus on Red, don't worry about me. No, focus no, we, we focus on both of us, bro. We here, we here. Focus on Red. <laughs> so, Red, I got to, you know, I did my homework real quick. Say right, you know say that. Even though we work together, we know each other. I did my little homework for the people. Mm -hmm. Let me know how the name Red Man came about. Oh, shit, John. God damn. Uh, I was a red dude. I was red. I was I was more redder than I am now. I, was, I had red hair. And then, um... I guess just from red, being young and being red in the face all the time, I got that name because I was light skin. You know, like back in the day, you called light skin niggas red and shit. And I added on a man when I started my career. Uh, uh, and before you was a rapper, uh, what artist did it inspire you to be a rapper to do music and stuff like that? Um. I always was DJing at 11 years old. Okay. And uh, and uh, I don't know, like uh, my pops used to play a lot of records. I was just into music at a real early age, like passionately. Uh, and then I DJ at 12 and 13, learned to DJ. And I started writing raps when I first heard... Uh, like maybe Run DMC, okay. Because I was always in the rush, like raps, like you know when the Sugar Hill Gang started, Treacherous Three, uh, you know, uh, Slip Rick, my mentor, KRS One. So when I heard Run DMC in the '80s, I started writing. But then when I really took it serious, is when I heard EPMD. EPMD put the battery in my back to say, "Yo, I'm gonna push this pin hard. I'm gonna go after a career." And I started pushing that pin. And going going to what you said, DJ. You was DJ for Lords of the Underground. No, no. I, yeah, I DJ for Do It All Do, from Lords of the Underground. Uh, right before I got on, I, and then when I got on, I DJ for K Solo, Dos Effects. Okay. But I was always DJing at clubs and shit, and DJing parties, weddings. And shit, you know. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, just talk, talking about Do It All, I see that you and Do It All be doing a lot of things for the community. Tell me about that. I'm jumping back and forth. Yeah, 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 do what you do. Um, 211 Community Impact is the nonprofit group in Newark. 
that do it all do do pray Kelly started um, I'm part of the team and this is this is uh this is just a dream we've been following. you know uh, we've been following this dream since we was 15 years old to pick up our city to do things for our city to serve our community to let them know we're still here even if we made it big so we just following the dream we had since we was 15 man it put put our city on our back so 211 community impact uh, look us up on IG and on the website as well if you want to find out more things that we're doing. Giving out like giving out beds and stuff like that. Absolutely, right? absolutely. We got free beds. It's called the free bed program. And we're giving out beds to families that need it, especially during this time right now. We uh, custom made the beds. We painted the beds, man, and had artists come through and paint the beds. And, and, and maybe in a week or so, we, uh, we're going to deliver the beds to the families in a week. Oh, that's going to be fun. It's okay. going to be fucking fun, yo. Tell me about the quarantine. Like, did it cancel a lot? Of, well, I know it did cancel a lot of parties because you was on the move all the time. So tell me about that. Did it, did, did it, it affect your, 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 your movement or also did it made a little bit more focus and made it pause so you could um, recognize what you're doing? You know, have a little bit more time to yourself. Or oh, what? What did it do to you? Well, the quarantine, I'm always in the house. I'll never be outside too much anyway because I'm always working. Uh, so it wasn't really nothing for me to handle. But not being able to go places where I, I usually would want to go, like the gym or, you know, just anywhere freely. Just have that free freedom of going where I want to go. That kind of affected me more. And uh, what I realized during this quarantine is to have more business going besides what I do. And that means I have to learn to get in a business that allows me to, col to collect residuals. And if you don't know what residuals are, residuals is making money while you sleep. We all should have a business that we can tap into that we can also make money as we sleep instead of doing the regular nine to five getting up going to work coming back home that's tiring you know i believe all people everyone should be their own boss and have some kind of income or a little investment that they can sleep and make a little change and i have a cup i i i have one i was doing during the quarantine which also opened my eyes. I was also making money during the quarantine. I was sitting in my house making money during the quarantine. I made like at least, what, 35, 40,000 during the quarantine in like maybe two, three months. So that turned on a light bulb in my head. Like I need to have more business going in that direction along with my rap career, on music career, acting career, what I'm doing here. Residual income. Everybody needs to invest in, in residual income. Find that way. You can make money while you sleep. So that PayPal cash that was ching, 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 ching. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And and it's, it's a blessing that I learned that and got into it right before the quarantine. Because, you know, hey, this quarantine took everybody by storm. And if you didn't save or you you didn't have any awareness about your money and how it's being you know how it's how you're pertaining it in the bank in case of a matter like this then you were fucked and i'm sure it opened a lot of people's eyes on that you know as far as the quarantine not just my eyes but everyone i'm sure everyone was like fuck this this might happen again what what can i do to prevent me having to wait for a stimulus check you know what can I do on my own to collect money when this shit happens again so I hope everybody invests in that, you know, mm. that part. now mm -hmm. going back to the to the music what was the song that put you on the map what was that one song that, that put you on the map what meet my career absolutely uh, now, what was the song that that you like, oh shit, this is it right here. Like, all right, the the song that was uh, in the beginning, because I know it's probably been a lot of different 
Different right. Hits. So, oh, so, so your you first said, hit, your so first my hit, my first song that, first I, that 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 I said, okay, no uh, job. I'm about to do okay. this shit twenty four seven. All right. So it had to be. It had to be. Uh, fuck. Let me see. It had to be. God damn it. It had to be off my like my third album. Um. Is it before the Muddy Waters? No, my third album was Muddy Waters. Okay. Um, so one song out of there is what you're saying? No, well, actually, the album itself is what took you to the. It's what took me to the next level. All like, because right. I had to, I had like pick it up. I had, as far as the singles, I had pick it up. I had the me and K solo joint on there. It's called my my big brother. Um, I had some joints on there, but pick it up. They put pick it up. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing was. It wasn't just about the singles I had. I had a great body of work on the third album. Everyone enjoyed because that's when, I, like, I always had skits, but the, I really opened up on the skits more on the third album, and that's what really caught the fans and the whole body, the whole entire body of the album is what triggered. I wanted to ask you about the skits. Like, is it a strategy about you making? An album like it needs this, it needs that, and that to make an album. Like, tell me about the skits, cause you one of them people that you have one of them albums where we don't skip the skits. Like we let it everything right through. This that's how I grew up right. listening to all your skits. So tell me about that movement. How did you develop that? Cause until this day you still do it. Absolutely, absolutely. Skits. Well, I ain't gonna lie. I I took the blueprint. Ice Cube is one of my mentors. You know, uh, N.W.A., one of my top favorite groups. And the West Coast was doing skits. Okay. East Coast wasn't doing skits. West Coast was doing skits. and Like who? Ice Cube, you said? Ice Cube, N.W.A., listen to their album, America's Most, Niggas for Life. They were doing heavy skits that, that blew my fucking mind. I was like, what is these niggas doing? So... I implemented that on my first album, second album, but I really went hard on my third album. And when I do my skits, I I have the I have the the reason why people enjoy my skits, my whole entire album because I I, I bring my skits to life. You can actually picture my skits absolutely. as you listening to them. Once upon a time in the bricks. Yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> You can actually picture my skits when you listen to them, so I have that that kind of movie mentality to let it, to 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 give to give a person insight, like oh wow, he touching on subjects and shit through a skit, and it's almost like a song. So yeah, it's part of the whole Red Strategy. Man entity. Yeah, it's part of the whole entity, and I got skits on his new album too. Uh, that's Back what on. I wanted to ask Big you, like, yeah, so Bigness. Muddy Waters too. That's what's coming out next. Yes, part Muddy two. Waters too. Fire. Definitely fire. Oh, we're gonna find skits in there too as well? Absolutely. It's it ain't gonna be all over the place like I usually have them because I got a lot of songs on this album. But I definitely got some heavy skits on there. Definitely. Any features in there or it's all red or all Giller House? Well, or... I can't tell all my features. I mean okay. I, I mean, you know Surprise. But... You gonna yeah, have yeah, some yeah, surprise. yeah, I definitely got some features on there. My family on there, you know, my usuals on there. Okay. Nothing too uh crazy. The name Muddy Waters, where did it came about? Shit, nigga, I don't. <laughs> he ain't yo, good I, with yo, these questions. I don't know. You know what? I was thinking of a name, right? I was thinking of a name for the album, and I was gonna call it something else, Water. And then I was just like, Yeah, mud. I was I, I had the name Mud Water first, and then I was like, no, nah, Muddy Water. And then, later on, come to find out that there's a blues singer. Yes, old called, school, right? M yeah, Muddy Waters. Now, I should have known that about my culture, about music, but I didn't. But I thought of the name, and then later on, found out there is a blues singer way before me that's called Muddy Water. So salute to him. You and had just, no problem with that? No, 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 no not, not at all. Because I wasn't calling myself Muddy Waters. I was calling the, my, the album Muddy yeah, Waters. Yeah, the, uh, the album Muddy Waters. Now going back real quick, 
You dropped this one song that it was a timing of car thieves in Jersey. Can't wait. Like, in there was one of my classics is when you throw the can out the out the out the car and you start, start driving off, driving off or whatever. Tell me about that 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 track. Oh, that movement. What? Can't wait. Is it can't wait or tonight? Tonight's which one is it? It's all black and white. That's tonight's tonight. Tonight's tonight. Tell yeah. me about that. Yeah, what, what, what you want to know about it? <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> tell me about that movement because it was a movement where I think, like, it was a season where Jersey or Brick City was known for Avon and Bergen with the car thieves and all of that. Tell me about that. Well, uh, tonight's tonight was, you know what? Tonight's tonight actually was was that shot shot by it was shot in north around my way and and that was the height that was like the like the beginning of my career too like tonight tonight um because the di director oh fuck what's his fucking name oh yes red is very no, good no, with no. names yo no, no i'm horrible with names <laughs> he's very good with names i forgot your name <laughs> uh, what is it you 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 but uh hold on the my guy that uh directs the rush hour movies oh um, see i'm not good with movies like that you hold on I, I, I can't. I gotta pull this up. Pull it up. Pull it up. Pull it up. Pull this up. Real quick. Hold on. Once again, we live on the Instagram with the legend Red and DJ June. You already know. One second. Go ahead. Pull it up, Red. Oh yeah, Brett Ratner. Hi. 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 Brett Ratner. Okay. That's my homie. Sorry, Brett. I was high as hell. But Brett Ratner directed Tonight's Tonight. Okay. And he direct and app and Russell Simmons gave him that job. Like that his first his first thing he ever directed was Tonight's Tonight. Then after he directed Tonight's Tonight, he went on and directed movies, big movies, Transformers, everything. So big up to Brett Ratner and uh Tonight's Tonight, yeah. Everybody know Jersey was heavy for Carthy, Jackin. You know, we was we was number five in the world. One of the worst place to live in. N Jersey, New, New Jersey was number five in the world. Worst place to live at, at wow. one time. Yeah. In the world. Yeah. And, you know, now, you know, now that we got older, you know, we started the movement. We got, you know, a younger mayor in there. Shout out to Roz Barack and, you know, the staff. You know, now we're, we're past that. You know, we're, we're a good place to live at now. So tonight's tonight was a movement. Back then, I was young. I was like 22, 23. Nigga, it was lit back then. In <laughs> fact, tell, tell me about the link up with Red Man and Method Man. That collabo, that duo. Till, until this day, it's a classic. Red Man and Method Man. Yes. Um, <laughs> met at Def Jam. We met at the Def Jam party. And me and him had, and then he got signed to Def Jam. And then they wanted to do a promotional tour. And we had to do promotional tours. Promotional tours consisted of going, driving the cities and going to record stores. Like I know if a lot of people that's tuned in, you might be young. Um, and if you're older, you understand what I'm talking about. Like, you know, back in the 90s, we actually had to get in the van and we drove state to state, city to city, shaking people's hands, sitting in a record store, selling our music right there. And then we do a show that night, you know? So me and Meth met on that promotional tour, which was one of the, which was one, a, 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 a very pivotal uh, promotional tour in the 90s. And it was called the Month of the Man Tour. And we went state to state, city to city, and advanced smoking. And that's where we connected. That's where we started, right? And because if you in a van with a dude for like, you know, 25 days riding city to city, you know, you want to, you know, build, build, build uh, some kind of uh, a respect and relationship. And we, you know, me and Meth, we, we only a year apart uh, born, but we, 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 we have the same outlook on life. And what makes our connection and what makes our career uh, successful and why we have a cult is because uh, we 
we first learn, first of all, to, to have a successful circle, to have a successful career with a circle, with your team, you have to communicate. You have to ask your man. You have to talk. Like, will you see yourself in the future? We have an entity now. We can build and, and create a cult. What can we do to keep that cult going? Because what I'm saying is we learn the do's and don'ts, the failures of a team. And that is egos, money, and just wanting to be a, a, in a position that you're not. Those are like the failures of a team, of a, like, you see what happens. You see, I ain't got to list names. You see all the big names of groups of teams that, you know, that just disappeared um, because of non-communication. So, to make a long story short, what make me and Method Man work is we understand we have our own separate careers. But when we come together, we have and we, and we respect it without, we leave the egos out. We don't care about the money. The money comes from the love we put in the music. We about unity. We about positioning. We about growing in this business and learning. So... If you, if, if you have a team and you're building with your team, remember, communicate. So, you know, like you ha you might have a dude that's like, you know, DJ June, you know, I I, I want to come out with a record later on. And this is what you tell me. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. You can work on the record. Now I know that and be open with your team. You know, I, I don't want to get to, you know, because I could talk and, real long on and, this. And this is the reason why it lasted so long until now. Yes. It's, it's about respect. It's about yet yeah, respecting people's time. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to make this short. Me and Meth survived this long and we're still relevant to you guys right now. Not just because we got skills. Not just because we love hip-hop. The main ingredient what kept us here is because we respect people and we respect people's time. That is it. You got to have respect. And that is it. Mm. Facts. And that is facts. You guys end up doing a movie together. How yeah. high? Absolutely. How was that about? Tell me how. Was it fun? Was it. And you guys kept your whole. Style swagging, which smoking, bugging out. Right. Tell me about that movement and how high. Well, the first one. Okay, well, the thing is. Your shit is ringing off like yeah, a Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's like, uh, yeah, no, well, I'm okay. calling you. Just tell him I said hi. My sister, she <laughs> hey, sis. hey, sis, how you doing, sis? What's going on, sis? Yeah, she All right, uh, yo, so how high, um, right quick, to tap in to what I was saying a minute ago, what made how high very successful is me and Meth then built our unity. We built our, our brand now. Yes. Now people are looking. From Def Jam, they they saying, "Wow, this dude, these dudes uh, dropped the album, the first Blackout. They're moving. Let's give these guys a movie." So that's after you guys dropped the album. That's after we Together. dropped Black Blackout. Okay. That's after we dropped Blackout. So you know, th th this is this is the plan. This is how it goes. <laughs> You have your team together, people see it, and they want to invest in your team. So now we move from an album to a movie. Now, what made how high successful mm. the key is what I just told you a minute ago. Our set from the direct people learn to treat your pawns like your kings and your kings like your pawns. That's all. And I'm going to tell you the ingredient to that, how it worked on How High. On our set, every day when me and Meth came to How High, got to How High on the set, everybody from the director, from the, from the, from the, from the wardrobe, from the art department, from the guy that sweeps the floor, every one of them was smiling Happy 
ready to come to work because Red and Meth brought an energy that on energy. the set that they just wanted to be around. Doing doing the movie of How High was more fun than the actual movie. And I mean, everybody every day was laughing on the set and hands down they said this is one of the best energetic sets. Especially all the bloopers and all of that, huh? All the bloopers, all of that. But I just want to let you know and, and tell y'all how it pertains back to what I was saying. Understanding your circle, knowing your team. If me and Mep came to the set and he's mad and me and him arguing, then what kind of set do we have? Absolutely. We have an unbalanced set. No one knows who to talk to. Is he's going to be mad at this guy? Are these guys always arguing? No. We, we brought an energy to the set. We treated our kings like pawns, pawns like kings, meaning the same energy we gave the top guy, the director, we gave the same motherfucker that sweeped the floor, nigga. Hey, how you doing today? How's your family? How's your daughter? All right, hey, give them my love, all right? You ready to work today? Okay, let's get it. That's all it takes. Great attitude. What you put out in the universe is what the fuck you get back. Facts. So, pertaining back to your question, how high was the success because of the energy we brought on the set? And that is it. It had its moments. It had its funny parts. Um, Dustin, shout out to Dustin for writing the movie. It was uh, me and Meth idea. And it worked. Because we had a great fucking attitude. That's so, all. So you see that passion you, you describe how high? So are you disappointed of how high too? Is it the same people? Is it the same people that did... Um, it was behind the scene of how nah, high? Nah, 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 nah. It wasn't the same people at all. Um, you know, I wasn't this... I, I was. All right, I'll take the blame. I you know was. what? Put it this way. I wasn't disappointed in the movie. I was mad as hell. I, I mean, I was dis... I knew it could have been better. Hell yeah. Put it this way. I knew the movie could have been way better. I was more disappointed... In the disrespect of putting the movie, put it this way: we started the movie, me and Meth. We started the movement. It could have been like I, you guys, the fathers, and those are your sons. Like, no, I wouldn't no. even want that. Hell okay, no, okay, hell okay. no, hell okay. fucking no. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. But the thing is, me and Meth woke up one morning finding out. There is a how high that's going to be shot. It wasn't like it was. All right. Because you got to understand. This is something that we started. So when someone. When 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 another company just decides. Okay. We're going to shoot a how high too. Without Red and Meth. Asking them. And then they asked us to be in it. And we said. Fuck no. Oh, so that's how it went. Yeah, they asked us to be in it after they decided they're going to shoot one anyway with, uh, you know, uh, young, you know, which is cool young dudes, you know, them some cool young dudes, facts, and they just play it, playing their part and being in the part of an entity that we started. They don't got so nothing to do they, with they it. They don't got nothing to do it's with it. The they people just, behind that. And they just play they just come in to play their part. And I think they would have did a they I think they did a good job for what the movie offered. Alright? Okay. Cause DC Young Fly is a funny motherfucker. Okay. He's a young, talented motherfucker. But I just think the movie could have been written better for them guys. Now the second how high it, it would it the, I, I felt disappointed and disrespected because it wasn't brought to our attention okay like before you know, before you know hey guys we thinking about doing a how high would you and Mef want to participate in it and then that would have been a decision we could have said you know what if we if we're not writing it and being part of the creative process of this movie then no. And that's basically what we did. It was already being written, so we said, no, we don't want to be a part of it. And okay. it moved on. But 
You know, they talking about doing something else. You know, on a quiet note. I ain't going to say it. You heard it first. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Hopefully, you know. If I if I do put it this way, I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a position right now, and I'm sure you are too, and I'm sure you motherfuckers out there too, in the position of learning to own your own shit. If I shoot a movie, I want to own that bitch because you know why? You don't want that shit to happen again. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, I don't never do this. I don't never point the finger. I do this, and I can say what what I didn't do on our end. Is when we did the first How High, we didn't sit down with the right people and said, you know what, we're doing this movie. I want to own it on a dotted line. I want to own my character. I want to own the movie How High. I want to own it. Since we did it, I want to own it. And we did not do that. So that is our fault. Okay. That is our fault. That is our fault. And that's a lesson learned. Now I know I'm going to own my shit. Anything I do from here on in, I'm going to own that motherfucker. Okay. Facts. Facts. Anything I shoot, I'm going to direct that bitch and I'm going to own it. And if I'm not going to own it, I'm not going to do it. And I, and, I, and I believe everyone out there should be on that same thing. Own your shit. And you know what? Talk, talking about that, there's three things you already said. Like, I remember me being on, on the bus on, on tour with you. And the first thing you say, I brought six people up in here. I don't tell you guys what to do. I expect all you guys to do what you do is because the reason I brought you guys here. That's right. You're you good at what you guys do. So I'm not here to boss you guys mm -hmm. around, but I, I expect for you to do what you do. That's best. right. That's right. And then another one, another topic that you said, like, you told me, June, let's do this Gila Casa movement. Forget about the money. Let's have fun first. Let's have fun. Let's let's build that energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's another one. And the third one is like when you said about family. Sometimes you call me, and before asking me anything, the first thing you ask me is how mom's doing. I'll forget about you. How mom's doing before exactly. anything. Exactly. You know what I mean? And and I look up to you, and I thank you for that too, man. For always, you know, asking about my moms. Not a lot of people, you know what I mean, go about it that way. And I, and I learn. By working with you and by you giving me opportunity to just be here and chill with you and smoke with you. I'm not smoking, but you know. Exactly. You know? And good for you. You stop smoking. But that, you know what, y'all, that goes back to what I'm saying, what June is saying, uh, because June been working with me for a long time. And, uh, you know, when I brought him out on the road, he was definitely doing his thing. He was getting footage. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. And I believe in being a boss. When you want to have a team and you want to lead your team, you don't you want to lead your team the right way you want to have I don't give a fuck what it is if you on the streets if you're doing uh, a good business with people and you have your team you want your team to want to work with you not have to work for you you get what I'm saying like no one wants to deal with an asshole and I, I like letting anyone that works with me branch and and fly because that is not the thing to always hold a person down under you. And you're supposed to let a, uh, someone, uh, people on your team get position. You know, get in position so they can make their own money and start their own generation. And that makes the circle bigger. You can't be the only one in your circle getting money and, and trying to hold a team down. Because it, they're going to look at you and then your fucking friends become your ops mm. after a while. You know, I don't, I don't. I don't create ops. Ops create they self. Anybody that I work with and don't work with no more, they eliminated they self. I never said, oh, nigga, I ain't fucking with you or whatever. They just know they wasn't keeping up with what I was doing and they had to eliminate themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm a, I feel I'm a good leader because, like June said, the, my first words that when someone texts me on my phone, Everyone starts with how's your day? Because if you don't, if you text me and you get on my phone saying, Red, I need this, I don't answer you, nigga. I don't answer you until you answer me back. And then I check you. I'll be like, um, sir, how's your day? Before we start, then they'd be like, oh, okay, how's your day? And I believe when you start by asking a person, how is your day? How's your family? You don't know. 
everyone has their own life. They could be going home to problems. Their grandmother could be sick and they taking care of them. They they kid could be in a in a wheelchair and they always got to take care of their kid. And and you and the and you can't just ask how's their day. You know, like how's your day first? How are you doing? And when you do that, before you talk to a person, it gives a sense of relief. Like, you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm fine. How, how was your day? I'm good. I'm good. You sound a little stressed. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, my, you know. And then I hear it and you listen. And when you tell them, it's going to work out. And then now they're like, all right, let's, let's talk. You know, they're not talking from emotion. They're talking from business now because they got the emotion out the way. So I just think that's key. For everyone you know when you call your moms when you call your friend when still to this day me and my my manager has been friends for over 30 years and we do not start a conversation text unless we say how are you doing how's your day how's the family okay this is what I need mm. and that is that is the ingredients to being a real boss not saying Yo, I need this, and no, I need that, and don't even know what the fuck you talking about. Ask your team how they doing, so your team never become your ops. Mm. Facts. Your That's team right. will become your ops if and, you don't treat them right. And like that, also, you get to develop yourself, too, as well. Right. You know what I mean? Because you're getting the green light, and you get to develop, like, hold up, man, I got to work harder. Red gave me the green light, so I need to come out correct. If I don't come correct... I rather won't come at at all. You know That's what I'm right. saying? That's right. Featurings. Any featurings that um you wanted to do and you didn't get the opportunity to do, or you're still working on it or whatever, like probably somebody that passed away or not, or like you have any featuring that you're like, damn, I still haven't done this feature with this person yet. Um I wanna do you know what? My 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 and this person is still living okay i want my my star feature of doing a song with is jamiroqua if people don't know jamiroqua look him up you when you pull up his music you know who he is um uh yeah his his style of music is is phenomenal uh, I'll, I'll, I just want, always wanted to do I just think me and him in the studio The energy Even if he sent me the shit And I gotta write it in my own studio I just think the energy we'll put on the track Is just Will be crazy mm. Crazy And uh, anybody else And he from the states? No he's from overseas Okay, okay. He's from overseas He's definitely from overseas But I think that's about it Ain't too many people Now talk about overseas Um Tell me about the first time I heard you in a reggae don't beat. You know, I, mean? I, I, I always heard the Muddy Waters, but when I heard, well, yo, that was red. I heard you on the DJ Dicky album, No Fear Part Shout Four. Shout out to DJ Dicky. Tell me about that movement. First of all, shout out to DJ Dicky. All right, I ain't know nothing about. Uh, I th he was like early with it. Early, yes. He yes, was early with yes. the rap and, and, and Spanglish. Spanglish. Yeah. He was early with it. I was over there. I was over there. With, I was over there with my woman, and my my lady was pregnant. We went to Puerto Rico. I took her to Puerto Rico. She was pregnant, and I was looking for some weed. And DJ Dicky picked me up. He took me to the projects, my nigga. Got me some bud, and. Yo, whatever he needed, I was like, man, I would give it to you, man. And I, I gave him my vocals and whatever. And he made shit happen. Like, yo, shout out to DJ Dicky. Facts. Facts. You know, until this day, that's like a, a classic album, No Fear Part 4. And that that also was like a, one of the teachers to me as me doing my mixtapes. Because like right now, like right now that Spanglish and Latin hip hop, Latin trap is making making noise but like that was one of the one of the albums that i heard like yes i could really do this i could really mix english with spanish and when i heard you on a reggaeton beat i always kept that in mind mm -hmm. so when, when i met you i'm like you're right i think we could do i already i already studied this i already been studying this um and um the album came out called 
Boricua Guerrero. That was another album that it was Nas bust around with a lot of Latin artists. Mm -hmm. So all them albums, especially you being from Jersey, from North, that inspired me to be like having that hope to do a mixtape. And then when you told me like a mixtape, you man, come on, let's do an album. And thanks to you, I started producing mm -hmm. and, and trying to come out with that Gila Casa album and always having a or track ready for you whenever you ready, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and, and all of that. So, like, I missed my question. No, it's no, it's all right. No, you said DJ Dicky, DJ <laughs> Dicky inspired. No, no, DJ Dicky inspired you, and and it, and it, and inspired you like like EPMD album inspired me to just go forward and really take this shit serious. So even when DJ June came to me and you know he was on his game. We, we started doing Gila Casa because I was interested in working with Latin artists and I'm still I'm still am and I did especially Gelo Star Gelo Star what's good Gelo Star that's my dude right there but uh, I started working with DJ June we started Gila Casa uh, we bubbled it a little bit because we were learning I was learning still and plus I had to do my album and my own music and keep that going so we tapped in and tapped out but I honestly know and feel that we are ready now to 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 tap in the right way with some good music and, and, and make it a, an event you know I don't want to just be doing it and just say you know without any knowledge of any of the the artists of the Latin artists I want to learn more about the Latin artists I want to learn the basics I want to learn the the culture more you know because that's what I'm about I'm about all genres of music so even when I did the song with Gello Star out there in uh, Miami, we shot the, the video, it, it was a great movement, and we stopped. So now I think I'm more aware, and June is definitely more aware. He like, you know, he got 700 views now from two, <laughs> from two views to 700 views. So that shows growth. That shows progress. That shows that from the, even the break that we took on Gila Casa, He's still been moving and learning and and and, 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 pro, and, 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 and and turning up more in his craft. So I think we definitely ready. I think we can offer more, man, than we did before. And, and me doing this live, I've been doing like almost like 15 lives. Mm -hmm. They always they all bigger you up, and it's like that movement that me and you created. It, it never fade out. It's like bubbling even now, even more, because they're always asking me. They even send me joints ready for us, you know. But like I know you've been busy, and I've been trying to master what what we created. That's why I haven't been like you're ready. I think we're ready, but you know what I mean. You put it out there. We almost ready. We about to get it ready. Yeah, yeah we but about we, to bubble. We, we we focusing on, on on what Red is doing and me mastering before we even. Cause this time, I want to make that boom. Uh, we started it. Yeah. But this time, I think. We can make a boom. We, we can, can put we boom. can put some sounds out there. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Because you know, it's it's like this. Um, I know I, I, I play my position. I, I know hip hop, but I don't know reggaeton. I don't, and I'm learning. So anything I do, I'm gonna just give it to June. You know, whatever he tell me I need to do, I'm gonna do it. You know, I'm a soldier, and and that's how a team works. You never just take your 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 position so much in effect of yourself so you can't learn so I'm willing to learn and just give June my verses you know I, some, sometimes I sit with June and write my verses cause I ask him what uh, say. yeah what Spanish word I can use and say and make it crafty and shit I call him up sometimes at night yo June what, what does the, it mean? Yeah, what the? How can I say smack? Get, it, how can I say smack the shit out you in Spanish? <laughs> and and he will tell me, and then I'll craft that shit. So to get out for more. Yeah, to get out for more. To get out for more. <laughs> I know that. So my thing is, at the end of the day, uh, I think we're we're ready and we're more aware to to put out some Gila Casa songs, work with other artists. And I know June is going to do it the right way. And I'm going to be a soldier and I'm going to learn from the homie. The young homie. That's what you do. I'm the old homie. You got to learn from the young homie. Now, you being a boss, where's, what do you see when, when you got somebody that got talent? Like, what is it that, that you look for? Or you be like, you know what, I think, like, you know when you see somebody, be like, yeah, I think I could, if I, if I, if I help him or he could develop, what is it that you see on the, 
not only like me, just anybody, like you being a boss and you building a company, what is it that you look for? They be like, yeah, he he's good to play on the team or he's good to like. Um, you know what? Right now, see everything I say, it always pertains back to square one, early in the, in the conversation, and just the that's and how I talk will can explain to you how I run my life. Um, what I look in a what I look in a person, not even an artist. When I look for in a person, is the respect for himself. For himself first. I, I I I I watch how they talk. Usually, the first words that come out of motherfucker mouth, I already see how his attitude and how his whole demeanor is gonna be. Mm. Um. I look for the qualities of a person first, which goes back to what I was saying in my earlier conversations. Your circle that you work with, they should know more than you or work just as hard as you. You should not have anyone in your circle that do not work harder than you or know more than you or look no less than you. Everyone in my small circle that I got in June, you're in my circle more than me about this shit than I do. Perfect example. What I look for, for example, I usually I started working with you because you have respect for yourself. It wasn't loud. You, 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 you like to work. Your work ethic showed me more about yourself then coming over inviting me to your house meeting your moms showed me more that you're welcoming you trust me you're a loving giving person then I got to know more about you in the music so I started dealing with June as he was pertaining to the question he asked me what do I see in a person if I want to work with them I'll I see how a person carried themselves, how they carry themselves with their family. And then it goes to the skills they know. Because I don't want to deal with an asshole or a person that don't know how to treat their family right. Because it ain't going to mix. Because I'm about love and unity with my fam and my circle. You won't connect with my energy. So, your question is, you have to have respect for yourself. You have to have awareness about yourself and your surrounding. You have to know your shit. You know, I don't want to have to question you on everything. And if you're an artist, if you if if you come up to me and you don't and you spit a spit a rhyme or you play your music and if I don't do this, if I don't get an ugly face Go back to the drawing board. Mm. Facts. Mm. Facts. No time for the bullshit. Because you don't want to ever have to be like, hey, you know, could you could you play my music? Could you, no favors. You, you, no you, you, you don't want that. You want to play your... Look, you know what my motto is in 220 is? Press the play button. I don't want to hear no talking. I don't want to hear... I don't give a fuck about your mama, nigga. Press the play button. That's my motto. And if you press your play button as an artist and I don't say who in the fuck is that? Give then go that. back to the drawing board. Mm. No time for oh that shit was cool. You got another one? Oh yeah yeah. Well you need to. I'm always willing to critique and I'm always willing to give advice. Because at the end of the day, I'm the type of boss and artist that want the young, the youth, to do better than me. I want my kids, my own kids, I got five kids. I want my kids to be better than me. I want to tell, I want to give advice to the youth to be better than me. But in order to be better than me, you got to work harder than me. Facts. And I work double time, triple time. So, artists, 
when you step to anyone, not me, you you can step to Beyonce, you can step to Jay-Z, you can step to anyone. Have your shit in a fashion where you press that play button. Look, how you doing? Yeah, how you doing? Look, I'm I'm so and so. Nice to meet you. How was your day? First, when you meet an artist. That's where a lot of people slip up. They run up on an artist. And they do not be like, yo, what's good, brother? How's your day? That, see how all that pertains back to square? See how, but see how it pertains back to what I'm saying earlier to you? Don't never step to anyone trying to offer them their, your music and you can't even say, how's your motherfucking day? That's first. Then, how's your day? Hey, listen, if you have a moment and if you don't take it, and listen to it and give me your feedback. Don't make the conversation long. I enjoy your music. Um, I appreciate you. If you have time, here's my music. If you can't listen to it now, listen to it on your on your leisure time. I have my number on there. I would appreciate your feedback. Have a good day. I'm going to listen to that motherfucker. You know why? Because, I and I don't even know his music. I'm going to listen to him because he said, thank you. Have a good day. And when I press that play button, and if that shit ain't making me go, who in the fuck is this? Then I'm going to call him up and I'm going to give him advice. And I'm going to be like, yo, you know what? You was a cool dude. This is my advice to you. Yo, you should do this. You should do that. Yo, thanks, Red Man. I appreciate that. Click. And I made someone's day. I inspired someone. I motivated someone. See, you got to have it in your heart to want to help people. You got to have it in your heart to want to motivate and inspire people. Because it won't work if you don't. So, long story short, that's what I see in a person if I want to work with them. That's what I see in an artist if I decide I want to work with them. It's the respect they have for themselves at the end of the day. You already know we got red up here. Knowledge. Yes, that knowledge. that knowledge. I was going to ask you uh, 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 what advice we got, but you already told them what advice. So before we get up out of here, this is what I do, right? right? I say a couple of things and I'll be like, um, if you were supposed to act in a movie, would it be Scarface or Godfather, what movie would you would like to be in? Uh, Scarface. Um, if you had to go out on a, uh, 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 okay, look at it. Okay, shit. Sure. <laughs> if you had well, to it's go, still the same thing. I ain't gonna, you know. I guess I gotta change the answer. <laughs> true, true. Um, if you had to uh, go on a date, would it, would it be J Lo or Cardi B? I didn't get the chance to choose other girls. But... Would it be J Lo or Cardi B? I gotta answer that. Damn. None of them. Shit, I got them. Up. I don't need that. Okay, okay, all right. So if you had to play basketball against, would it be Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant? First of all, I'm horrible at basketball. Okay. I'm horrible at basketball. But if I had to play with a person or against? Against, against. Who would it be? Ooh, that's a good fucking question. I got another one uh, like that. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, you asshole. Oh. Uh, you, you know what? Yeah, I have to play one. against the legend, uh, Jordan. All right, all right. Now, if you had to go fight against in the ring, would it be Mike Tyson or Mayweather? <laughs> or if I had to fight against? Yes, fight against. Oh, I'm kicking Mayweather ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not fighting Tyson. Shit. All right, all right. So, still on that note, fighting against Michael Myers or Chucky? Fighting against Michael Myers or, or Chucky. Chucky. Which one would you choose? I will pick Chucky up and throw that little fucker in some traffic. I will kick Chucky ass all around Newark. Yeah, you, you, Chucky. You guys came across before, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I kicked Chucky ass up and down these projects here. Hell yeah. <laughs> what was the movie that you was part of? Um, It was called The Bride of Chucky. Oh, uh, okay. The Bride of Chucky. Yeah. Now, on that note, Jason or Freddy Cougar? If I had to fight against? Uh, fight against, yes. Fuck. Jason or Freddy Cougar? Um, Freddy Cougar got them goddamn nails though. Mm. Um, he got them scissors. He got, but Jason got—he just a cocky fuck though. Jason, 
Jason, huh? Jason or Freddy Krueger? Jason or Freddy Krueger? What? 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 What year, Jason? All right, because Jason was a punk a couple of years and shit. Like when he went to space, I fight that Jason. Jason. <laughs> I fight that Jason. When Jason went to space, I fight that punk ass Jason. That movie was horrible. So I fight Jason when he went to space. But if it was the Jasons in the early '80s and the latest Jason, because the latest, uh, the latest uh, Jason movie was uh, uh, directed, I forgot who directed it, but they did a great job. That, where he was running fast. Uh, that Jason, I'm not fucking with. He had his weight up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell so, yeah. So, on the fighting though, but to defend you, who will you choose? Superman or Batman? On the fighting note, to, to defend you, to defend you, to help you out. Uh, who? Spider-Man or Batman? Ah, uh, you said Superman or Batman. Superman or Batman. Either or. Batman or Superman. <laughs> Su Superman or Batman or, or Spider-Man. Batman. Superman, Batman, or Spider-Man. Who would I have to defend me? Yeah, who would you choose to help oh, you out? Oh, Superman all day. Superman. Hell yes. And the last one, if you had to smoke a blunt, would you smoke with Bar Marley or, or Donald Trump? Ooh, that's a hard one. <laughs> For real? That's, that's a hard one. Yeah, that's cool. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Because you know what? You can enjoy no, no, your... No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Okay. Why? Listen, why? Okay, okay. All right? Of course, everyone would expect me to say Bob, Bob Marley. Marley. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Of course, and that's the legend. But then again, I'm looking at my options because that's how I think. Oh. All right, if I get Trump in the office to smoke this shit that I smoke, that's what I'm talking that about. That motherfucker might listen. And he, <laughs> I might compose some shit off like, yo, my nigga. Trump, you, you really fucking up out here. Oh. He'd probably be like, yo, I know, I know. What is this shit? I'd be like, Trump, listen. <laughs> I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions. Uh. You could put in a suggestion box that you can probably start covering your ass. you would be like, for real? Like, yeah, man, listen, listen, man. I got a whole gang of shit. I got a list of shit. Are you ready, nigga? Uh. He said, I'm ready. Look, everybody out this office, I'm about to listen to this gentleman right here. And see what the fuck he really got to say. Now, Trump, I'm gonna tell you something. If you don't do these words and tell and do what you're supposed to do after this, I'm gonna smack the shit out you. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, I understand, sir. So, and Trump, I, I, I ain't say it yet. Okay, I'm okay. still wearing my options. Okay, okay, okay. Now, making that happen, smoking with Trump might not be effective. Okay. You know. So I'm gonna have to go all day with Marley. Oh, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> That's right. Smoking with the legend, he was about peace and 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 and, and he was about. You gotta understand about Bob Marley, man. He was about what's going on now, but speaking it through the music, you know. And that was his his uh, not just his passion, but he was like the doctor of. Music that made you feel unity. Uh, that's what he believed in. His whole mo movement was, I'm going to create music to bring people together. That's what he figured the medicine of what's going on now would be. Talking through his music. And I, I figure I'm kind of that way too, even though I'm a little bit more aggressive with it. But... That's what he was about, and that's why I would smoke with that man right now. Thanks. Well, my people, anything you want to shout out? Anybody you want to shout out, Red, before we get up out of here? That's almost our time. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Brick Red. City all day. Okay. Family all day. Um, I just want to shout out the fans that's tuned in. Absolutely. I'm um, proud of this guy. Yes. Views is up. Yes. Um, work is up, definitely. Work ethic is up. And dropping new music this summer, Muddy Waters 2. Facts, working on, uh, you know, just more content to drop. And I'm going to stay afloat. And I'm going to continue giving you that raw that you've been asking for, especially on this new album. So, uh, And thanks to this man for giving me the green light. I'm also proud to be part of his movement and, and, and just for him giving me the opportunity and the green light. So, you know what I mean? This we this is what we wanted to bring to the, to the, to the Instagram Live, to our people, that we got a lot of things coming. Red got a lot of things coming, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, um, but shout out to, uh, you know, all the artists that I did work with. Absolutely. Artists, Yellow Star. Yes, Efre Uno, shout yeah. out to Efre Uno. Yes, Dominican absolutely. Niggas. Yes, absolutely, real Dominican niggas. Um, S Miami. Drake. Um, Dra Draco. Uh, Draco. Draco, shout out to Draco. Draco. 
Um, my other dude, the apartment we went up to. We got 20 seconds to go. Hurry up, hurry up. Um, shit, I forgot. Shout out to everybody that helped us with Gila Casa. Gila, Yo, Casa, Gila Casa was we created come. here in the same room. Absolutely. Where you were like, Yo, Drew, turn that up. Let's record. Facts. And Muddy Waters coming, part two. That's Gila right. Casa, too. That's right. Redmond, CJ June. Salute. Good shit, June. Yeah. Good shit. Yeah.